very much. So um, the last time I didn't quite finish what I wanted to say, but uh, about these quantization vortices. So this is uh, just a yeah, recollection. We have this map here. So we are dealing with this product, the model space times the surface. And then there is this uh, universal bundle PD that has, um, yeah, arises from these um, discriminant uh, device and so on. So this is just the projection to sigma. And then I said that there are different ways of looking at this um, L2 geometry that uh, also Martin talked about. Um, and, um, and this is a formula that is quite handy involving fiber integration. So this formula, so I think I should maybe emphasize that when I write this C1, it's the first churn form, not the class, right? The, the class would be the cohomology class of that. So this is maybe a bit unusual. And sometimes I might make the mistake of calling this churn, first churn class, but it's a form. It's very important because here we don't want the class. The class is easier to, quite easy to obtain. This was the argument that also Martin used uh, in the last lecture. The, the actual form, the, so these formulas for the, for the form, this is just non-trivial, well, much more difficult. The other ones are, are sort of easier, not trivial, but easier. This is something more sophisticated. It's a form for omega L2, not the class, not the cohomology class, okay? And uh, yeah, and then uh, this was the, you know, the statement that basically does, already answers this, this question. Can you do the geometric quantization that I advertised, okay? So, um, so this is the result. So the, you start with a pre-quantization of basically just the, the area form on the surface, right? Which is needed to write out the vortex equations. Okay, so we call this pre we choose a pre-quantization. So the, there is a, some kind of um, quantization condition for the volume, right? And then uh, when this is satisfied, so this is something that I, when I rush through this, you know, overview of geometric quantization, so when, once you have this type of uh, integrality conditions on the symplectic form, there is, you always be able to, to, uh, to construct a pre-quantization. Maybe there are more because you can also, uh, your, your pre-quantum line bundle, you can tensor it by a flat bundle and then you get the same, uh, another pre-quantization, right? But the, but the existence is always uh, there, okay? So suddenly we can, we can find this Q, so pre-quantization of that once this condition is imposed. Okay, and then this is the um, this is the extra input. So we out of this Q, so this bar again means that I, I am fixing uh, you know Hermitian structure. So um, there is so there is another choice here of uh, yeah this uh, root of the uh, well let's say anti-canonical bundle on sigma. Okay, this is another choice. Okay. And then I call this M. So M depends on Q and depends on, on this choice. And then this was basically the answer. So this formula here gives you a, a line bundle over the symmetric product, which does this frequentization job, okay? And, um, and then, yeah, and the statement is that, uh, well, basically all the frequentizations of omega L2 given by this formula are given by this recipe. Okay, so let me just sketch just very, very quickly how you go, uh, how you, you, you prove these. Okay, so there's a so lemma, what, so there's a first lemma. Okay, so I'm just really sketching how these are. So basically this, re, this involves relating the geometry of line bundles on sigma itself to the, the geometry of line bundles on the symmetric product. This is something that people have studied. Uh, yeah. Um, Oscar, I think knows about these, right? So the, so the, the first thing is that, so the map, um, so there's, a, there's an obvious map from the, from the Picard group of sigma to the Picard group of the symmetric product. Let's call it gamma, okay? It's a map that takes, that takes a line bundle here and you just do, yeah, the, it's a, you pull it back through all the factors and it tends everything, right? And now you divide by, so you descend it to the, to the, the quotient by the symmetric group, okay? So this is well fine. So the, um, so the statement is that this map is an isomorphism on P on, so is an isomorphism on uh, the P cards of degree zero, 
okay? So this uh, same, so another statement is that this is actually, you can actually write it in this way. So PD, um, yeah. Okay. There's another way of writing it. This is this divisor PD over here. Okay. So this is something that, uh, I mean, I'm not going to go through, but this is not like, a, not, not a big deal. Okay. And then the corollary is that, uh, yeah, so any, uh, you know, any, um, any uh, Hermitian bundle with flat connection, because this is basically how you control the, you know, the difference between prequantizations is by comparing, uh, by studying the, the flat bundles. Okay, so with flat connection, uh, is, is isomorphic to some, yeah, um, something of that form, like that. With, uh, with, chain connect, with chain connection, okay? And now just uh, blitz proof of this statement is that saying that the, so the first assertion here about that this recipe does the job of the prequantization, okay? So first assertion is just, is just this formula there, if you think about it, okay? Okay, and, the, and, these, uh, and this sort of converse part, the second statement is just a corollary. So just, yeah. So this is actually not really, so. We have to, uh, you know, do some, you know, the, all these steps carefully, right? And of course that formula is very important and we are using Quite a bit to write out that formula, you know, this technology that I sort of summarized last time, and also this relying on this formula that other people have obtained for the um, uh, omega L2 form in terms of fiber integration. Okay. Okay. So now, so basically, this is already it, but I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going, now going to show you something nice about this which um, gives you a very concrete uh, picture of what these quantum vortices are like, okay? So these are sort of the extra information. So for that, I need some, some other lemma, okay? Which is just this formula here. So this is also something which is not sort of original, okay? So this is the statement that you can write uh, the anti-canonical bundle of the symmetric product in this way. Okay, so the proof, which you can also look up in other books. So this book by uh, geometry of uh, women's, uh, yeah, of uh, algebraic curves, uh, Alberello and so on and so on. So this has, for example, this statement. So it's, you look at this short exact sequence, which is really like multiplication by this canonic, by this universal section really. And then, uh, yeah, and then you see that the, the, the determinant of cohomology is sort of, you know, you, you, yeah, you can write it like this. So here you have this direct image. And then the point is that this guy here identifies with um, the, yeah, the, the tangent bundle. Okay. It's just that. Okay. So you know what? So you can write, rewrite this LM in the theorem. So I can write this LM like, um, you know, the, the canonical bundle uh, tensor. Uh, yeah, this, yeah, the image of this map gamma on M, right? Okay. Okay, and now this is what I, what I would like to, to do. So now we have these wave functions, right? On, this, on, the, on the phase space, which is the modular space of vortices. And I'm going to relate that picture to 
something that has to do with, with because we are dealing here with the vortices. So think about these movies, right? Where you have these peaks and they are sort of moving around, but a, a, such a configuration is a point, right? On, the, on this moduli space. And now we want to go back to the surface and see how, I mean, how can we understand this in terms of uh, sort of these extended particles, okay? And this is what this theorem is going to tell you, okay? So, so there is an isomorphism So a vector spaces, complex vector spaces. Um, okay, so uh, again, we are, so I'm doing here the, this, uh, uh, yeah, holomorphic quantization. So the Hilbert space of polarized uh, sections is going to be uh, a space of holomorphic sections of, the, of this uh, prequantum line, line bundle, okay? Okay, and the point is that, so now this space is just, ne uh, just canonically isomorphic to the to, to lambda D and then holom space of holomorphic sections of a line bundle on sigma, okay? The line bundle is Q and then a spinner bundle, okay? Sorry, what did you say? Yes, uh, it's the same M as, the, as it appears there, which depends on Q, and Q appears here. It's, so this is the M corresponding to Q, okay? So, it's, it, so in the, morally, you can look at this and say, well, this looks a, a, a bit like we deal with fermions, right? Because, you know, when we do quantum mechanics, this is the, the usual recipe. We, we do one particle quantum mechanics, and then we choose, are we going to treat fermions or bosons? And then if it's bosons, we look at a multiparticle state as a, as a symmetric uh, pro product, you know, a tensor product of the one particle states. If you choose to treat fermions, then you look at the, uh, at the alternating power, right? Here we are not doing, any, we're not making any choices, right? We look at, we quantize the moduli space, and now we interpret this in terms of what happens in the, on, on the surface, right? And this is what is imposed on us that we should look at this in a way like fermions on the surface. So we have some kind of physical information, right? Not only that, but so we, we see fermions here, right? But we see also spinners here, right? So this is some kind of version of this spin, uh, spin statistics thing that when you, you know, in, in, quant in quantum mechanics, when you do things very formally in terms of axiomatics, right? There is this thing that uh, whenever you do fermions, you should have spinners, right? Uh, usually there's a construction that you do by hand and things work in the end, right? But there is something called the, well, possibly you can, you can have one from the other, okay? You start spinners and then you, you say that, well, actually you have fermions, right? The two things being somehow part of a theorem. And this is really what we're getting here, really. Okay. And this is just a very, uh, it just, yeah, this is just a very short calculation. So, so let me just do it for you. For you. So, the, so we look, so now I, 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 write, I write this LM uh, in this way, okay? Right, so it's the K some M. Okay, so now I use cell duality to say that this is, you know, um, yeah, so. Dual, yeah. Okay, so this is, I write it as, so HD of sigma D. So I'm saying that the, I'm just lifting things to the uh, Cartesian, product, right? And now I look at uh, symmetric, you know, symmetric invariant sections here, okay? Dual, okay? And now I use the Kunith formula. So I get, you know, H1 dual, okay? And now, yeah, I, I just interpret this. So this is like 
using that the cup, the cup product is uh, unsymmetric. Okay. And now we use ser again, but on sigma. Okay. The du so the dual now, I'm taking the dual of the dual. And then I get to, yeah. So this is really just something very straightforward. So there's no choice. This is just, it's a canonical isomorphism. So I, yeah. Okay. Right. So one thing that I should emphasize is that, as I say, it's a nice of the vector spaces. So here we have more structure because we have this Altoona product, right? We, we have obtained these as a Hilbert space. So here it's a finite dimensional vector space, but it has canonical in a product. So the, all of this co comes from the data that you need to uh, write out the, the vortex equations, right? But this has metric structure. Here, there will be metric structure too, right? We'd like to see, yeah, but we don't get it automatically from this calculation. This is all complex geometry. But we have this isomorphism, we can transfer the inner product there to here, okay? But it doesn't follow from this, yeah, we, this is not the metric, yeah. So here you also have metric structure, right? But uh, if you do these operations, uh, I'm not saying that the, you get uh, an, uh, also an isometry, okay? So now let's see, so the, the degree of this uh, thing that you know the line bundle that you have on uh, in that the wave functions but uh, but so I, i'm interpreting this as you know um uh symmetrized sort of one vortex wave functions that have that are sort of spinners valued in q okay so this this bundle here where they take yeah the, okay has the degree k plus g minus one g is the genus of sigma okay so now if you have, um, yeah, so if, uh, if the degree is very big, then this, uh, yeah, the, uh, yeah, the, so H1 is going to be zero. And then you can see, uh, yeah, so how many, what is that, what is the dimension of this space? Okay. And the, yeah, and the, so corollary. Okay, so for K, so for K big enough, so here it's G minus one. So you just use this kind of riemann rock uh, and cell duality uh, arguments to, you know, compute, uh, yeah, uh, so look at uh, line bundles on, uh, on, uh, on uh, algebraic curve, yeah? So, so, the, so then, um, yeah, we, so this is true, then the dimension of uh, H naught, okay? This looks a bit complicated, but now I have a formula for it here in terms of, you know, just uh, geometry of algebraic curves. So this is going to be uh, K, Choose D, okay? Remember that K was somehow the a measure of the area. It's, a, it's this product of the area times, times tau, which is somehow gives you, you know, uh, like a, a measure of how, uh, what is the space available for the vortices, right? Taking into account both the size of the surface, the area of the surface, and the, this kind of uh, area of the vortex, which is controlled by tau, right? Okay? So this, and there's this kind of normalized integer that you get K. So this is more like the, 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 the number of states available given this data, right? And, and this is the formula for, yeah, clearly accommodating D fermions, right? When you have K one particle states, right? So somehow you have here this picture, which, which makes you think that the quantum vortices are like free fermions on the, on the surface, right? except that they're not really free because there is this kind of metric structure that also encodes interactions, okay? So this is basically what I want to say. So now there's also this question that we made some choices, right? So what is here that is uh, dependent, dependent on choices, right? Are these quantizations somehow equivalent or not? So there's, there's this question of, can you, for example, find uh, a Hitchin connection that uh, relates this, these uh, choices and the, so I, I'm not going to uh, do on that, but uh, yeah, the answer is no. The answer is no, that uh, you can, uh, so you can understand 
how to fit the various choices in, in, a, in a line bundle over some Picard group and so on, right? But you can prove that there are obstructions for, you know, to have a projective profile connection, okay? So the, so I think this is a picture that the, you know, in, at least uh, if you want to relate the choices uh, by, you know, a hitching connection, it will, it will not work and, uh, in sort of non-trivial cases. Okay, the case of line bundles where there's always projective profile connection. Okay. So maybe I'll stop there for this kind of first part of my mini course. And now you can put questions, I guess, right? Exactly, yeah, no, sorry, no, no, no. I, I'm just saying that, um, yeah, I'm, yeah. So here, let's see, yes, the, um, uh, I'm fixing the, the complex structure of the surface, right? And then I'm saying that I'm doing calculated quantization with the natural uh, complex structure on, on, on the symmetric product, right? Yeah, and I'm just saying that there are other choices, you know, the, these choices that are there, right? Okay. For example, yeah, we, we chose a preconization of the area form and so on, right? So these are the choices that I'm saying that, uh, you know, the, what I'm getting here in the end depends on these choices. And I, I, I can relate, so I can parameterize these choices in some algebraic geometric way. And now there is this kind of space of choices. The question is, can you make a bundle of, yeah, and then relate the different choices by projective connection? The answer is no, this is what I'm saying. So this is a negative result. Yeah. That well, that I well, that I'm not studying. Yeah, that that thing I'm not studying, right? Because well, because. Because we are we are choosing right we are we are choosing from the beginning when you write out the fortis equations you are choosing a metric that fixes already a complex structure right so we, I, I'm not I'm not I'm not I don't want to mess up with the classical thing no, no, right the choices that I'm that I'm talking about are the choices when you do the quantization right. Not always, not well, not, not necessarily, not necessarily because you know sometimes yes, that, that's right. That's so, for example. So let, let me just I, I talked about this last time just very briefly. So sometimes you you start with a symplectic manifold, right, without a complex structure, and you say well let's make it scalar, right, with a complex structure compatible, right, and then this will, will allow you to do the quantization. Now, this is a choice, a choice to do the quantization. And in this sense, yes, it is interesting that you uh, make sure that you don't, you, you, uh, yeah, what you get in the end is independent of this choice. This is what, uh, what, exactly, exa absolutely, I know, I know, that's right. At least for these scalar polarizations, the <clears throat> you do have that the Hilbert space is is independent up up to polarization by scalars, right? So you are saying that here you don't have such a thing. I don't have such a thing, and and what I'm saying is that the that part of the choices are for, for me not not really important because, well, be, because on the surface you have already chosen a complex structure when you choose the metric, okay. right? With and you do, and we can talk about this, yeah. yeah. But there are the choices, and this is the choice that I'm, so I'm, there are the choices, and I, what are the statement I'm making about not, non-existence of a hydrogen connection is related to those choices, okay? Anyway, more questions? I'm sort of discounting my 10 minutes at the end, you see, so I, No, and this is a very good question because I told you, well, you know, there is this spinner thing, but this smells like a metaplatic correction, right? It smells like a metaplatic correction, and it is, right? It's some kind of 
we sort of metapolitical correct, correcting this cue that we chose for the area form. Um, but it's some kind of metapolitical correction for free because on this side, there is no metapolitical correction. And actually, I'm going to tell you something more that you, uh, there is an obstruction to doing metapolitical corrections on the semantic product. So you can prove that, uh, well, and, and, uh, unless you're doing like degree one or genus zero and some, uh, you know, even degree, if I recall correctly. So there's only exceptional cases, most of them uninteresting, where you can actually have a metaplectic structure on the symmetric product. So basically, this problem is telling you, don't metaplectically correctly, please. Right? There's some non-existent theorem. And in the end, when you do this interpretation, you, you get here something which looks like a metaplectic correction. This kind of uh, spinner thing, you get all of that uh, at the same time. But this is, yeah, an obvious question to ask, yeah. More questions? Okay, so now I'm going to switch to the second half of my mini course, which is about, uh, yeah, the, so not the first order dynamics where the vortices have this kind of periodic orbits, right? But the, the second order dynamics, which is kind of more usual, uh, you know, for physicists. And this is what uh, Martin has been talking about, right? So he, last, in the last lecture, he, said, well, this is a way of doing the quantization of vortices, okay? And yeah, that's true. And we're going to hear more about that viewpoint uh, on Monday in the talk by Nick Manton, uh, how, you can, uh, how, this is, uh, how you can get actually something interesting uh, when you study the thermodynamics. So you, you do this, this kind of uh, canonic quantization in the most uh, straightforward way or natural way, yeah? And then in this thermodynamical limit, you can say something about what's going on, okay? So what I'm, going to tell you is something different because I said that my mini course was supposed to illustrate different choices and different options and different viewpoints on quantization. So now we're talking about quantization of these, of the, sorry, of the uh, bulk tangent bundle of the modular space. I'm dealing again with the same vortex line bundles, okay? But I'm going to uh, now focus on a supersymmetric um, uh, context Okay, and um, um, yeah, and I, I'm going to, okay, so um, I'm going to focus on, uh, uh, so counting of, uh, counting of states in a particular type of um, supersymmetric quantum mechanics on this phase space, okay? And this is something which, sorry, uh, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's like, uh, yeah, so basically canonical concession of these, which is the, you know, geometric concession of that. Of that. So the, this is something which is very, very similar to what uh, uh, Nicholas was, um, ex yeah, uh, talking about, uh, you know, these A type supersymmetric one mechanics, okay, um, but has a kind of slight different flavor, which I'm going to explain uh, tomorrow, okay, but today, I have to start with some uh, topological preliminaries, okay? So I'm going to tell you about uh, L2 Betty numbers uh, of Riemann surfaces. Okay. Okay, so, so basically the, uh, I'm going to argue that in the problem that I'm going to explain, so I'm not, going to talk more about vortices today, okay? I'm just going to do some algebraic topology, elementary algebraic topology, that is going to be helpful for tomorrow. And then I, I'll tell you how to relate that to, uh, you know, the physics of quantum vortices, okay? And then the, po the point is that when you're counting these states, you are doing uh, mathematically a calculation of uh, these L2 Betty numbers, these invariants, which I'm, I have to sort of explain, okay? So the, let me just start with some motivation. So now this is mot motivation, not from physics, but from more, ma more sort of mathematical perspective. So now I have, so Martin is not here today, but uh, that's why I'm comfortable in putting as many holes in the surface as I, as I like. Okay, so actually I want to have sigma with the genus, positive genus. Okay, so compact, rem so compact remain surface. In fact, oriented, like, 
or closed, let's say. Anyway, okay. So when you when you look at the Betty numbers, okay. Um, yeah. So when you look at the Betty numbers of the let's say, so you look at the um, the Ram cohomology, right? Yeah. So the answer is that well, they're one zero or two g with degrees zero, two, one, and uh, yeah. Right. Okay. So these are the Betty numbers of a, remote, of a closed surface, something very elementary. And then you have this intuition that this is counting something. It's counting the number of holes, right? So for each hole, you have, um, you have these cycles, right? You have these, uh, let's say, some A and B cycles, right? And you can uh, interpret the, you know, you can say that there are somehow, um, uh, yeah, let's say harmonic forms that are sort of localized around, you know, you can, you have this picture, which is very intuitive. So here you are counting the number of holes and each hole has an A cycle and the B cycle, okay? Okay, so there's these other invariants called the, let's say, analytic. So the, these l 2 Betty numbers come in different flavors, okay? I'm not going to define them today. And I'll define them tomorrow. These are invariants which are not so um, well known. Introduced by Atia, okay. So they have to do with the uh, yeah doing some uh, yeah analysis on covers of the surface, okay. So um, so usually you take the so you take the uh, the universal cover, okay. But you can take all other other covers of sigma, okay. And then you have the you have a group acting which can be for example the fundamental group. Okay, let's see. So gamma, okay, gamma can be I1 of sigma, it can be, um, for example, H1 of sigma sometimes is also natural. Okay, and then if you do this, um, if you look, if you compute them, okay, so you, here this depends on the space, well, let's say the cover and the group acting. Okay, and the answer is the following. So it's um, it be 2G minus two for uh, in degree one. It's going to be zero otherwise, okay? In other, the question is, do you, so this is a calculation that, uh, you know, the paper where Tia suggested these ultimate numbers, he made immediately the, this calculation. And, um, and now the question is, so what are they counting? What are these, what are these ultimate numbers counting? Well, I have not told you yet what they are, right? But, um, okay, so, um, so basically, this is what I'm going to try to explain, okay? The, um, so in a sense, they are counting vortex states, okay? Quantum vortex states. And I'll tell you how, yeah, what, what is, so the, what is the, so the, the way Atiyah got this was first to show that, uh, yeah, there is these vanishing theorems about the, you know, degree other than one, and then the other characteristics in, for the ultimate numbers uh, and the uh, and the usual Betty numbers have to agree. So this is how you get that, yeah, this value here. Okay. But um, yeah, the the rest of the of my lecture today, I'm going to um, try to motivate, you know, a way of another way of doing this calculation, which is somehow more intuitive, and uh, gets, I mean, has the flavor of getting sort of a basis, a natural basis for. You know, things that, you know, just like the, you know, these harmonic forms, you can think of them as giving this intuition of what you're counting with the, the RAM cohomology. Okay. Okay. So I'm, uh, so by the way, so yeah, so these, uh, these uh, things that I'm going to explain now, they are, uh, it's a collaboration with the uh, Marcel Buxted. Okay. And this is also uh, in the, you can find these also, let's say, in the archive. Okay, so I'm going to tell you first about um, so twisted homology. Of um, let's say alpha covers. So this is some kind of um, you know um, not that sophisticated version of uh, like um, homology theory, which in the end I'm going to argue is related to this one here, which is more complicated, okay? So you have to start with some data, okay? So, um, so the data are 
So phi, so a free abelian group, I'm going to call it A. So something which is, you know, Z to the um, N, yeah? Some N, okay? So R, I'm going to um, denote by R the, um, the group ring. So F, this funny F is the quotient field of R, okay? So this, um, so that is some kind of sort of a choice um, of sort of coefficients in a way. And now I am going to take, so topological space, uh, spaces where I'm computing the invariance on, topological space. Okay. And now I need to choose um, a group homomorphism from pi one to A. So this is, a, so this is the, this is the alpha that appears here, okay? So I said that, well, with this data, I'm going to cook up some homology theory that I denote in this way, okay? So one, another way of thinking of this, of this alpha is, is uh, as, a, um, yeah, as, a, as a homology class, okay? Because, uh, yeah, I mean, this factorizes, you know, the, so alpha, alpha, so alpha factorizes always to the, you know, H1 because of the Hravich map. Yeah. Okay, and then uh, you have here, you know, a map from homology to A. So this is, um, you know, uh, this object here, right? And, um, yeah, and now, and now from alpha, you get a cover of X in the following way. So you can, um, um, yeah, so um, there is, um, so, another, so yet another way of, of, of looking at this alpha is as a map to uh, X to, the, to this KA1, the, so eilenberg maclean space, which in this case is BA, the classifying space. Okay, so I call it a, so this is the, so another viewpoint on this, a, 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 let me just write it here. Okay. So X, B, A, okay, and then this is like a, a homotopy class of maps from X to B, A, which is a classifying space of, so this B, A is just B, uh, yeah, uh, it's going to be just, uh, yeah, so S1 to the N, right? Okay, and now this has universal cover, which is this EA, which is R to the N, right? So now you can use this map to pull back that bundle, okay? Um, you know, the, okay? And, the, and, this, and, the, and then you get, um, you get a, a cover, okay? There's a covering space. It's a covering space, but it does not have to be connected, okay? So giving this alpha, I get, uh, I get all of these. I get a P alpha, which is a, covers, a covering space of the topological space, okay? And now the definition of these groups is just, well, um, you know, um, when I look upstairs, the, um, yeah, the, so these, the chains, so the single chains on the cover, right? They're going to be a null module Okay. And now I use well, as coefficients, not quite R, but the, this F, which is a field which is easier to deal with. Okay. So I, I take the, you know, the homology. This is the, the definition. Okay. Okay. So this is just that. So this is the, some kind of twisted version of, of homology groups that contain more information about the, the you know, topology, like the pi one and so on, than the usual homology groups. Um, any, this is just a definition, right? Any questions? No. Okay, so now I'm going to give you some properties of this uh, homology theory. So this would be ideal exercises for an exercise session in this kind of, Went to school. Okay. So properties. Okay. 
Okay, so these are simple exercises. So uh, property one is that um, so there is so the, so the, the map that takes R to the quotient induces maps from um, yeah from the homology you know the so let's say so the, the homology of the cover. Okay, so this is the same as H I. You know I can just do these right. Um, yeah, and now the because yeah I can just this is just a map to H I. Okay, so there are these maps here. Okay, P P two. Okay, so in the case where where uh, the map so this homomorphism is trivial, where you're mapping just pi one to zero. Okay. Then the yeah then if you if you think about it this cover is just trivial so you have just uh, you know the x yeah you have you have just you know a yeah you have just the situation and in this case you have that the uh, you're not dealing you're not really twisting at all you just um, you just extending coefficients you have h i of x let's say yeah and then you're just twisting. Or you're just extending the coefficients to f. Okay, so this in this case you're not getting anything new. Okay, and now there's this pro this property which is also going to be, yeah. So you have, it's like when you have a, a, some kind of intermediate. So if, if you have, if you have here an intermediate a prime which injects into a. Okay, so here this is like some z to the n prime with the smaller rank okay we have some some map here which is injective okay and then you have the corresponding uh, f prime and so on yeah so there is this thing that so the there's a uh, yeah you can you can compare the the two you can compare the two um so h the twisting by um by alpha or just or by these uh, yeah, so doing the reduction here or the reduction there, right? And and you get so this is it. You know, yeah. So uh, yeah, and the answer is that yeah, you're just um, doing some kind of you know um, yeah extension like this. Okay. So these are sort of elementary properties that will give you some intuition. So the it's when when you have some something non-trivial about the uh, 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 whole. Um, homomorphism that you really get uh, this kind of twisting for example and uh, okay so examples so the properties are simple exercises these examples are sort of somewhat easy exercises okay so in the end we're going to do uh, yeah we want to compute things on uh, on Riemann surfaces, okay? Um, so let's say let's say so E one is the so the first calculation of this. So what what do you, what, what do you get if you just doing the um, if you uh, if you're computing this for the circle, okay? So the answer is okay. You get. Um, Okay, so now this is something, um, yeah, so you get, you get the, um, a, you get the homology of S1 extended. Okay, if alpha is trivial in that sense, which you sort of expect, otherwise you get zero, otherwise. So this is something which is yeah you have to use these properties and it's sort of not a big deal, okay. And now this is really the crucial calculation, which is the um, yeah the the space which where you have two like a bouquet of two circles, okay. So this is the space which is most important to understand what why we are interested in this because. The point is that um, 
when you have a pair of pants, you can, uh, you know, remit surfaces, you can decompose in terms of pair, pairs of pants, right? And this is, uh, yeah, you can retract these two there, right? Okay, so this is really what, where we are interested, yeah, uh, where we, can, we want to compute uh, the, yeah, this, um, this homology, okay? And the ends and the, yeah, so basically you have to relate. Uh, yeah, so there's some kind of uh, Maya vectories argument where you can, um, you can compute these in terms, yeah, so it's, this is going to be uh, F if I equals one and zero otherwise, okay? So this is basically, you know, somehow getting close to this motivation thing, because we know that when you have a, a, a closed surface, you can make a, a pair of pants decomposition, right? Then what I'm saying is that, you know, this, this, this uh, answer there for the uh, Betty numbers of the surface somehow, you know, after this result means that maybe you, what you're doing is that you are sort of counting the, the number of pairs of pants. So this is really what I want to get to. Okay, so, um, so we have these, and now, um, um, yeah, maybe I should also add here something that, uh, yeah, so if, uh, if alpha is trivial, okay, so if alpha, if alpha is trivial, um, on, uh, yeah, so on one of the factors, um, so the, yeah, so the inclusion, of that factor, okay, uh, gives a, yeah gives an isomorphism from uh, yeah h one of, of of that factor to the h one, okay. Okay. Okay, so now, uh, yeah, the map uh, row one, so the map, the, so we have these maps rows, so the, the row one uh, for uh, this, the, this space is injective. Okay. And now something that is, this is kind of important, this one here. Which, yeah, so suppose you have, so now you have, uh, yeah, so S1, uh, now the universal cover of the, the space, and then you go down, okay? Okay, suppose you have a map like this, which, um, which has non-trivial, yeah, with, so with non-trivial, non-trivial homology, one homology, okay? Um, okay, so um, so here, yeah. So he, so here I have, yeah. So 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 sorry. So this is the the outcome. So this is the p the p alpha of the alpha that you fix. Okay. Um, so here, yeah. So here you have an isomorphism between, uh, yeah, between the the h one. So you have so the so p alpha after, yeah. Um, Okay, so this is a generalization of this uh, E2, okay, and he uses this E3, uh, anyway, and then you have a Kunith formula, and anyway, this is just another, another, um, you know, uh, homology theory, which is going to be interesting, and you're going to see why, okay, so now a remark, okay, um, so when, uh, yeah, so when alpha, okay, so, so this has to part. So when alpha is not injective, okay, so it has, so it has something which is, which in the, in the, 
in the pi one that the that this kind of that that is killed in the abolinization, right? Okay. So it's uh, so. Um, so we have so we have uh, some gamma some gamma. Um, yeah. So let's see some gamma which is um, uh, which yeah which gives you some non-trivial element. Um, non-trivial element of the kernel, right? Of the map, you know, the map to the, yeah, okay, so the, um, okay, so then, um, yeah, so gamma, so, so, so gamma induces um, an isomorphism uh, on, uh, on H, H1 alpha. Okay. And now this is something that is also important that so when alpha is uh, so injective, um, so when you have, so um, yeah, so when you, when you have the, uh, the commutator, so when you have a, an F, which is the commutator, uh, so let's see, so injective, then you have, uh, yeah, when, when you have the inclusion, so you have inclusion of the of the of the factors. Um, um, uh, maybe I should say yeah. So we have uh, well maybe um, yeah. So gamma let's say gamma. Okay, so let's say gamma is the, the commutator of inclusion of two circles. Of the two factors, the uh, so the, the corresponding, yeah, so um, um, yeah, so the, the so gamma induces, uh, yeah, an isomorphism on each one. Oh, okay, um, right, okay, so, um, right. So then I'm past how, but how much am I past? Okay, so maybe I'll just, um, right, I, um, I'll say something about, um, yeah, just, yeah, so, in, I'm going to use two more minutes, is that okay? Okay. Okay, so I'm I'm uh, I'm doing I'm done now with the sort of boring stuff, okay. And the yeah, and the this is what I what, what I want to do next. So the uh, yeah, so we have so we have here the so we have here the um, surface, okay, and we have a pair, a, a pair of pan decomposition, okay. Various various pairs of pants, okay, and we are going to to work with the uh, with the uh, with the uh, particular alpha, which is the um, the the Horevich map, okay. So pi one to um, to um, yeah H one. So this is the main example that we're going to use, okay. And um, okay. And the, the so the point is that uh, yeah I'm going to get you a basis okay for this uh, this twisted homology in terms of uh, in terms of cycles which are of this sort okay, okay so the uh, I'm just going to say that the the cycles of, that are so on the on the pair of pants, which are what I call um, uh, Pohama cycles. Okay, they are the yeah they form uh, yeah uh, bases of what uh, yeah of um, you know um, of cycles that that are sort of uh, yeah analogous to these A and B cycles. That we're counting with the with the, the RAM homology. 
Okay, so the, the so the point is that the yeah the cycles of this type on the cover they're going to have some kind of states attached to them that have to do with vortices. Okay, but I don't have uh, more time today. So uh, yeah, so this is called the yeah what, what I'm going to explain is some, some some kind of poke hammer principle that we can sort of localize these uh, yeah this homology or cohomology yeah to, uh, in in fact, of this, of this sort, we are dealing with the cover, so we can actually find some cover where they are actually simple curves, right? And uh, yeah, some kind of um, version of um, harmonic theory there. Uh, yeah, uh, they are, so we can represent, uh, you know, um, yeah, quantum vortices, supersymmetric quantum vortices with them. Okay, so this is coming next time. Mm, I'd like to make a, a comment or a suggestion uh, coming to the first part of your talk, the geometric quantization of yeah. modular space of vortices. I guess as a question could be formulated, what could preventing you from doing something similar to non-abelian vortices? So what are the difficulties you may find there? And I guess the part of the suggestion is that one issue was relating line bundles on the symmetric product with right. line bundles yeah. on the curve. And I think there is a good chance that you could uh, have a nice understanding of the um, <clears throat> line bundles of the modular space of non abelian vortices uh, using this um, crossing, uh, well crossing picture that I described in my lectures, because <clears throat> they relate to land bundles on moduli space of vector bundles, right. which is well understood. Right. Yes, that's right. So yeah, so here I'm just presenting, you know, the, uh, yeah, this is, I'm presenting basically what, uh, yeah, I have been studying this kind of quantization, this flavor, uh, also in other examples. This is what is kind of published and uh, people can also look at the details and so on. Yeah, but that's true. You can do, absolutely, you can extend this, this uh, technology to no obvious situation. I'm actually studying uh, simple cases like that. Yeah, um, I'm studying the like this. I think it's going to be like the simplest example, which is already non abelian beyond vortex and line bundles. Yeah, there are some ideas that I, yeah, I am working on, yeah, but I cannot present these right now. Uh, about the wall crossing, uh, I don't have really uh, nothing to say about uh, what is happening when you have the, when you cross the, yeah, you talked about this in your lectures. Uh, in the non-abelian case, there are the, 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 the these crossings. What what is going to change in this picture? So on this, I don't really know. I uh, have anything to say. Yeah. So, also an interesting question, but I was not. I was um, uh, <clears throat> pondering on something more basic, which is one issue is to have an understanding of line bundles on the, on the Picard group on these moduli spaces. Yeah, it's not obvious, you know, like it, the big that's right, that's right. Well, of course, but, but, but let me let me yeah, let me finish. Right. For non -abelian, well, for non -abelian, that's right. For non abelian vortices, the modular space is not so well understood. Yeah, that's true. But uh, in some cases, it's actually kind of so it's, it's going to be a bundle over the symmetric product. Uh, so there's going to be a vibration of the symmetric product. And these, you know, you can uh, you can understand these in some way. Yeah, well, I was going beyond actually that picture is just that in any rank. Because the moduli space in some stream relates to vector moduli or vector bundles. Yes. Okay. You, you can understand what is the Picard group. Yes. For that moduli, and in the crossings, the codimension is high, and so the Picard group will be the same. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, this is good news. But, right. Yeah, this is good news. Yeah. At least to certain value of, yeah. of, of the parameter. So I'm not, yeah, I think you are, you are dealing with um, yeah, some case which is uh, different from the, the simplest example that I have in mind, but anyway, but yes, that's true. There are various ways of relating the non, the non abelian situation in general, right? Uh, the moduli of uh, vortices uh, to, yeah, various, uh, you know, the, this kind of abelian situation that I'm focusing on, uh, yeah, certainly moduli of vector bundles and uh, yeah. 
all of these things help. Sorry? So there are various versions of, uh, uh, yeah, of LGBT numbers. There's analytic, algebraic, and uh, combinatorial. Analytic means that it's, uh, you're going to see, I'm going to define them. So it's, um, it has to do with the, uh, you know, and it mixes, you know, it has to do with the, uh, the nulls on the Hilbert space, L2 of gamma, yeah, of sequences. And um, yeah, they are defined, you know, yeah, so they, so usually these, these ones, they depend on a metric. You have to define, you know, put a metric on the space. In principle, it will depend on the metric. Sometimes these NLGBT numbers, they, they coincide. There are different definitions and they coincide. For example, when, the, when the, the base is compact, they always coincide, okay? So these NLGBT numbers are the is def definition that is more, most relevant to physics. But uh, sometimes, well, to compute them, Usually, it's better to prove that they are maybe equivalent to these combinatorial ones or, and compute the other ones. So there's, um, yeah. So there's uh, yeah, this has to do with the, just like analysis on rings that have to do with this kind of Hilbert space structure on the group. You want to ask some questions? No. <laughs> 